Sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, shall we start? Ah, I think Professor Raghavan was planning to join us, sir. We'll just, okay, sir. Maybe we'll just wait a minute for him. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, maybe we could start and uh, he'll probably be joining in. <coughs> okay, sir. <clears throat> Yeah. So, shall we start? Ah, okay, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so, Okay, yeah, present yes, everybody, sir. right? Okay, yeah. So, uh, are there any questions from either? Uh, So, any questions from either uh, exercises in the, the end of that uh, chapter of Rosen or from the lecture last time? Please just unmute your mic and, and ask. Uh, questions? Okay, so maybe I will begin with, uh, with something and uh, people can just uh, uh, ask more questions along the way. So this uh, little problem that uh, we were trying last time on uh, how to find the number of uh, six digit numbers in which no two um, no two digits are consecutive, something like that. Um, so maybe I'll share my screen. Gurswami, uh, you probably have to enable uh, share uh, screen sharing. Okay. So now, please check, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's working. Uh -huh. Can you see my screen now? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, okay. permissible, sir. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me just talk about this six-digit numbers uh, problem from uh, last time. 
so if you recall the problem was the following uh, we wanted to know how many six digit numbers are there with the following property that no two consecutive digits are the same and uh, during the lecture we sort of solved it using one method which is uh, to sort of scan the digits from uh, left to right so let me just recall our argument we said uh, if you sort of look at the leftmost digit then there are only nine choices for that space because zero is not allowed but having chosen that digit the next digit can only be chosen in uh, nine ways because again one digit is excluded and so on so as you move to the right at every step there was one excluded digit so the total number of choices worked out to be 9 power 6 and the question i had sort of posed during the lecture uh, for you to think about was the following what if you try to do the same problem from right to left instead of from left to right in other words if you first looked at the units digit uh, and sort of so what happened so there we already ran into some trouble because the units digit had 10 choices the zeros also allowed and then when you move to the left there were nine choices nine choices nine choices and so on but then we i mean our our initial way of doing it was to say okay there has to be nine and then you know for the leftmost digit there are eight or whatever it was but then we realized we had to be a little cleverer uh, there was some some slight uh, subtle subtle behavior as soon as you got to the last two digits yeah, so uh, let me just uh, try and explain how to complete the argument from right to left so uh, let's call these last two digits as something let's call it a and b okay so the second last digit is a and the last uh, i'm sorry leftmost digit is b and the one after it is a and uh, so what we we did i mean we looked at choices to the until that point so now i won't worry about those numbers nines and tens and so on let's uh, not worry about yes uh, may i interrupt you for a minute yeah yeah just to let you know that i i am here and ah. uh, so just to let the others know i am raghavan i am also assisting vishwanath for this tutorial oh, and uh, if you want to uh, send anything on the chat i will uh, look at it yeah so I feel free to not or uh, reply accordingly i mean i will do something about it yeah okay okay yeah exactly so, so feel free to use the chat also so i mean you can also just unmute and ask or if it's something that comes up while we are discussing something else you think of some other question and so on uh, please just use the chat the i mean you can also just point i mean just uh, specify which exercise number of rows and you are having trouble with or things like that okay so i think everyone all of us have a copy of this uh, this chapter of rows okay so yeah, i'm done please continue yeah uh, so so the 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 argument that uh, we uh, got stuck on we really got stuck on as soon as uh, we reached this second last digit a what i'm calling a here so now let's let's revisit the the same argument a little bit more carefully so what is the the thing we need well the the problem was there are some cases a could be zero because it is not the leftmost digit and so we split it into two cases okay so let's uh, call this case one suppose a is zero okay and case two is if a is not zero. so we need to sort of understand these two cases separately so so let's just uh, let's do this uh, this case separately uh, so let me look at what happens if a is zero so this digit is a zero okay now the problem actually splits into two two sub problems in in some sense uh, so what's what can we say about uh, this last the leftmost digit now so i called it b right so how many choices are there for b just unmute and speaker so recall the condition was no two digits 
no two consecutive digits must be the same same number nine choices for b nine choices for b because what i don't have is? what is excluded zero is excluded yeah. of course zero is in the excluded but that's the only exclusion right so for b i have nine choices okay so the the, the second digit is a zero and now uh, instead of again doing the same thing like what how many choices are there for the next digit and so on okay instead of doing that let's just take a slightly more sort of holistic view of this so um okay so this this line business sort of keeps happening each time um okay so um so let me just talk about uh, these last four digits now so so observe that these last four digits can be well what what do they form so of course this is a zero so this this digit here is not a zero okay and in fact this therefore forms a four digit number of its own right these four is, is uh, the, i mean that that number it forms is a four digit number which has the same property that no two consecutive digits are the same okay so instead of solving the the original six digit problem so this is actually a four digit number with no two consecutive digits equal okay in other words the original problem uh, by splitting it up into sub cases we encounter a smaller version of the same problem okay so uh, since you know this is sort of the, the broad uh, idea here let me give these numbers names so let me call it uh, suppose i say let a sub n denote the the number of n digit numbers with this property the number of n digit numbers okay so with what property with the property that no two consecutive digits are the same so for example if i have a sub 1 what does that mean i am asking how many one digit numbers are there which have the property that no two consecutive digits are the same okay but one digit number is just well it is just a single digit and it can't be a zero right when i say one digit number i don't allow a zero there so i'm i'm going to talk about uh, so I, i will get nine choices so a sub 1 which is the number of one digit numbers with this property is exactly nine okay so let's do the same thing with a sub 2 what do you think a sub 2 So number of two digit numbers with this property so well one yeah 90 90 why the unit digit is impossible uh, the next one is nine possible mm, the no, nine for no. two yes yeah yeah nine so, square nine square i mean the same problem right that the, there is a zero problem there but uh, so i mean we could think of this as you could do this left or right for example so if you if you say how many possibilities for the um, for the tens digit there are nine possibilities nine possibilities nine possibilities for the unit digit so this is 81 or 9 square okay and now let's see how this breaking it up into the sub problems how does that work so what are we concluding uh, here's our, our original problem we want to find out the, the value of a6 okay so my original question was this what is a6 okay now we broke this up into two cases so here's case 1 case 1 was that this number which we called a this digit <coughs> case 1 is that a equals 0 uh, okay so how many possibilities are there in case 1 in this case 
the number of possibilities turns out to be how many for b i have nine choices okay and what's to the left of a for that how many choices do i have i don't want an actual nine number nine choices for no for uh, this this entire four digit number how many choices do i have nine raised to the power four no that's only if you knew the answer right so okay. but then we have given it a name that that's the those are the numbers we are trying a4. to find so it is a4 so so this is for example the number of possibilities is nine possibilities for b and for this four digit number there are a4 possibilities because that's what a4 is defined to be is this okay so this is like you know you sort of solve the problem by in terms of you know itself sort of a recursive sort of uh, solution of the problem now let's take the other case suppose i do case 2 which is if a is a non zero digit okay so let's go there so this is a a is some non zero number okay now how many choices are there for b Sorry, I can't hear too well. Seems to be breaking up a lot. Uh, how many choices for B? Eight. Eight choices, sir. Eight choices. Yeah. So now there are eight choices, and now let's look at this uh, a itself. It's a non-zero digit. So now, how do I break it up into a smaller subproblem? Okay. So now, just look at everything to the right of 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 B. Okay. Look at this five-digit number. <clears throat> yeah. A five, sir. Exactly. So that is. So so why is this a five-digit number? because a the the leading digit is not zero right we have that's the case in which we are so since we assume that case this is now actually a, it's a it's a uh, it's an allowed five digit number it starts with something that's not zero so then we now break this up into these two possibilities take think of this as a five digit number with no two consecutive digits being the same Okay, and then there is a choice. So now here, the number of possibilities turns out to be eight choices for B, and for the five-digit number, there are a five choices. Okay, and you can see that these two cases are disjoint cases because either a is zero or a is not zero. Right? There is no you can't do any double counting here because they are two disjoint possibilities, and they are exhaustive possibilities. Meaning that's all you can get. You don't get any. additional uh, uh, choices so now let's do this so what is this uh, sorry uh, what is this uh, tell us it says that a6 therefore is nothing but uh, 9 times a4 plus 8 times a5 okay, and more generally in fact the same argument shows the following we're trying to find number of such guys with n digits then that's 9 times the the same thing with two digits to the right that's the case when a0 is the sort of the the second digit from the left plus 8 times a n minus 1 okay, and this is true for all n for which it makes sense so n has to be at least uh, two here so that a1 at least makes sense okay so now it's just a question of you know sort of uh, so this is i mean this will come up again in uh, later lectures but i just wanted to point it the points out here because we already you know did this problem using a different method so observe now we can solve for for a6 okay how do we solve for a6 because we already know a1 and a2 okay a1 was 9 a2 was 9 square okay now let's use this this uh, this relation here what does this relation give us this says 
that a um, sorry a three equals uh, a three becomes uh, nine times a one plus eight times a two. Okay, so what is that? It's nine a one plus eight a two. So that equals uh, nine into so this is nine power one plus eight into nine power uh, two. Okay, so let me I I will sort of pull this out. So this nine power one is the the common power of nine for these two guys. So I pull that out and then write it as nine plus eight into nine. Okay, now observe what's inside the bracket is just seventy two plus nine, which is eighty one. So that's nine square. Therefore, the answer is nine cube. Okay, so a three is nine cube, and in general you can you can prove this by induction. You can so you know one possible way of proving this. By induction, you can prove that a n is nine power n. Okay, and why is that? Well, you sort of just apply the the induction hypothesis and so on. The base case of induction we have checked a one and a two, for example. And now for higher higher n, all you have to do is just assume that a, you know a n is given by this formula, and then show that a n plus one would be given by the correct formula. Okay, so let's do that. So let me just check this for you. I I let me prove that. So I'm going to assume this. Assume well. In fact, I'll assume a k is nine power k for all k smaller than or equal to n, one to n. So this is sort of the strong form of induction, k from one to n. And now I'll try and prove that a n plus one is exactly nine power n plus one. Okay. How do we do this? Let's use this uh, what's called the recurrence relation, a n plus one. So I, I'm going to use this one here. This is uh, nine times a n minus one plus eight times a n a n. Now the same thing again. It's nine into nine power n minus one plus eight into nine power n. And I I sort of do the same thing. I pull out the the smaller power of nine from both, which is nine to the n minus one. And what's inside is the same thing, which is nine square. So the total answer is n plus one. Okay, so this is just uh, an illustration of, uh, of what's called the um, you know, the method of recurrence relations, and um, of course we solve the problem easily just by scanning it from left to right. Okay, so that's uh, that was this problem. Any any other questions from lecture or the exercises? Okay, so uh, in which case, let's just look at uh, a few other problems. Vishwanath. Uh, yeah. Uh, just to let you know that uh, um, I have shared the your the chapter the, your the mail that you sent. Yeah. Uh, I have sent it to everybody in reply to the message from Guru Sami. Giving the links for today's uh, meeting. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I think it is being sent already to to all participants. Well, uh, somebody said it; they didn't get it, so oh, I, I see, just I see. to okay, okay, uh, just, okay. just, just okay, to nice. let all participants yes, sir, know. Sir, uh, we received that um, uh, mail, sir. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so then let me. I I just sort of picked a couple of. Uh, Interesting looking problems from that set. I mean, all, all of them are interesting. Many of them are sort of routine, but uh, here are a few. Uh, so let's look at this problem 24C. Okay, so what does this 24C say? Uh, so 24C. So let me just read out the problem. Okay. So this was the inclusion and exclusion uh, um, sort of problems that we we did a few such examples. 
So this is, for example, uh, so how many, so this is problem 24. Um, so it says, I, I want to know how many uh, numbers between 1000 and 9999, which means how many four digit numbers. So how many numbers? Have various properties, okay? Uh, are, for example, it says how many four digit numbers are uh, even or divisible by three, divisible by five and seven and so on. So let, let, let's just uh, pick one of them. So how many four digit numbers are divisible by five, but not by seven? So how would we do this? Any suggestions on? So what, I mean, uh, how many are divisible by five for a start? Uh, to triple nine, four nine, we have to find out the number of multiples of five. Ah, okay. Okay. So suppose I knew how many multiples of five there are. Yes, right. then so, you have to subtract it from uh, how many multiples in between 1 and 1000. Ah, okay, fine. So let's first find the number of multiples of 5. So that's what you're suggesting, right? So the number of multiples of 5 in this range, 5 between 1000 and, so between MATLAB including both 1000 and 4 nines. So the number of multiples of 5 is, well, uh, let's see, you must look at how many multiples are there, there between uh, one and um, uh, one, one and nine, 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 and subtract from that the number of multiples between uh, one and three nines, triple nine, right? Okay, so what's the answer? It's uh, this minus thousand by five, is that, well, that's not going to be a, a, an integer. So I should take the integer part of this. Is that all right? So maybe, I, okay, I mean, this is just some fancy way of saying, uh, so how many, how many multiples of five between one and, okay, so let me just do it the way you suggested initially, between one and 10,000. And uh, so how much is that? Well, that's just 10,000 divided by five, right? 10,000 is already a multiple of five. So this is 2,000. So there are 2,000 multiples of five from one to 10,000. And uh, how many between one and 1,000? Well, that's 1,000 by five, which is 200, okay? And now if I just subtract one from the other, so there's 2,000 minus 200, right? So that's 1,800. Okay. So there are exactly 1,800 multiples of 5 between 1,000 and 999, both included. Okay. So not that I'm, I'm sort of, I mean, I'm, I'm in, in this way of doing it, I'm including the multiple 10,000 instead of the multiple 1,000, but finally it works out that is the answer. So is this all right? Is, is everyone okay with this? There are 1,800 multiples of 5. Okay. Now, similarly, you have to find the number of multiples of 7. Okay. But the question doesn't ask that. It says how many multiples of phi are there which are not multiples of psi. So how do we do that? Find the number of number of multiple of 35. Okay, great. So what you have to do is to find the number of multiples of both 5 and 7. Okay. So let me just indicate what we would do. So you take, so maybe you should just think in terms of Venn diagrams here. So this is the set of all numbers between 1000 and 999, sorry, four nines. 
and among these you have numbers which are divisible by 5 right this is m5 multiples of 5 then you have multiples of 7 okay so you know how many there are in in each set i know how many multiples of 5 there are and i know how many multiples of 7 i have right so these two sets i know their cardinalities but what is being asked for is uh, m5 minus m7 right so i want to know how many are only inside uh, exclusively inside m5 so to do that you just have to subtract off the intersection so all you have to do is get rid of the intersection so you have to determine this how many multiples of 5 are there which are also multiples of 7 but since 5 and 7 are relatively prime to each other this is just all multiples of 35 okay so now the question reduces to finding out how many multiples of 35 there are in this range and once you know that you can just subtract that number from 1800 okay so uh, um, maybe i will just leave that for for you to try so you just have to compute this and and pretty much all the other parts of this question are similar so sort of asks for those which are multiples of both or multiples of 7 which are not multiples of 5 and so on. okay um let me take up another problem so this is uh, well it's not one of the problems on the exercises but here's a question if i take numbers from 1 to 20 how many subsets are there whose sum is 30 so let me just write this question out for you again so this is uh, here's the question so take the set s one to twenty I want to know how many subsets are there of S. In these subsets, how many subsets T are there of S with the following properties such that so I want two properties. T should have two elements. It's a two element subset, and second property, the sum of all the elements of T. So let me just give that notation. Sum of t, which is sum of those two elements, should be 30. Okay, so I'm giving you two conditions: the number of elements and the sum of the elements. And I want to count the number of subsets which satisfy these two properties. For the first one is 20 combination two. 20 combination? No, no. I want both to be satisfied. Oh. And okay, okay, okay. Not just. Uh, So subset should have both properties. No, but uh, he probably meant just having the first condition. Yeah, uh, I mean it's not two separate problems, is what. Uh, is what oh, yeah, if you oh, want to. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Got it, got it. Yeah. So, so uh, there are twenty sets. Ah, uh, there are twenty subsets. Why? Ah, uh, if I am selecting any number, for example, mm -hmm. if I am selecting eighteen. Okay. okay. So for getting some thirty, obviously my another choice is okay, to. Okay. Wonderful. Can I do this to? But uh, uh, if I chose one. No, no. For no, no, no. Uh, let me correct yeah. my answer. Just. But you are the right track. That's what you want to do. Five. Okay. Why? Because at the most we can select the if I am selecting the fifteen. Hmm. Uh, there is a paired fifth. No, we cannot select fifteen. Sorry, sir. So if you you select the pair of elements, uh, each element should be greater than or equal to ten. Each element should be greater than or equal to ten. Ten. Okay. Ten and so, twenty only one possible. Okay, so let's just so if you're collecting a set of all a comma b or something. Wonderful. Okay, so let's write it like that. Set of let's write the elements of T as a comma b, and let me also say a is a is the smaller element. 
it doesn't matter in which the order in which I do it. Yeah. Right? So let me say a less than b. So in some sense, we want to list the possibilities. So, so I mean, the initial guess is we could choose any a, and b would be determined as thirty minus a is our guess. Yeah. But the problem is that since the set only contains numbers from one to twenty, every a cannot you cannot find a pair for every a, right? So a has to be at least ten. Exactly. So let's write out the possibilities. If a is ten. Then that's twenty. If a is eleven, nineteen, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So it's eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen. And of course, I can't choose fifteen, fifteen because I need to choose two distinct elements in my subset, right? So that's about it. I can't have any other choices. Is this is this fine? So there are exactly five possibilities. These are the five possible choices of subsets. Okay. So uh, the answer in this case is five. Five subsets. Okay. So this this basic idea of of sort of you know giving these these elements names and then trying to see how many possible fix one and then see how many possibilities there are for the other that sort of um, uh, approach is very very useful and widely applicable. So let's let's see if we can do the next. possibility example what if i change this problem to uh, this uh, subset cardinality is 3 and the sum is If possible, write to the partition of thirty, and then we take only the three partition. Uh, three sum. Partition of thirty. What's what do you mean by partition of thirty? We have to write thirty uh, uh, in different uh, format. For example. Uh, Okay, but we are in the one two twenty six. Okay. Sorry, we are in the what? So, so partition usually means that we allow re repetitions also, right? For example, thirty is also ten yeah. plus ten plus ten, but that wouldn't count as. Uh, yeah. Right. But also, what is interesting is uh, to solve a much harder problem, right? You you somehow write a much bigger list and throw out. A very large number of those possibilities. Okay. Only keep it's a small number of possibilities. Three elements A, B, C. Ah, okay. Then the A plus B plus C should be thirty. If you are fixing C is one, means A plus B will be twenty-nine. Okay. Six choices. Ah, uh, A plus B twenty-nine. You have six choices. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, let Let me just write down what you just said. So let's write T as A B C. Okay, then what did you want to do? Let's see see the possibilities, right? C equals one, and then you're saying A plus B is twenty nine. Okay, let's look at the A and the B problem. So in some sense, this is you can see it's reduced to the previous problem, right? If you yes, fix yes. C, then somehow it seems to have reduced to the previous problem. Um, how many? Why did you say there are six choices for A and B? So twenty nine, we need a sum. So nine, yeah. if you are choosing the minimum for A is nine means then the twenty is the maximum for B. Ah ah okay okay like that ah okay understood fine so ten and nineteen etc. Ten and nineteen, so, eleven and eighteen, twelve and seventeen, thirteen, sixteen, fourteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's the last okay nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, six choices for A B. Okay C is one, there are six choices. Ah uh, then. If you are fixing C equal to two hmm. and twenty-eight, we have to find out the choice. Okay, fine. So if C equals two, then again you must look to see what are the possibilities for A and B. Okay, so that's that's sort of a good approach. So A B again, sum should be twenty-eight. So the smallest is eight and twenty, uh, nine, nineteen, 
14, 14 is 28, right? So that I can't allow 13, 15. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are again six possibilities here. Okay. Uh, and so on, right? I need to keep doing this. Uh, what's the largest value of C I should take? So what about say, should I go all the way to C equals twenty or? Uh... Then go up to nine. No, man. Up to. Uh, uh, Actually, you are increasing the value of C and decreasing the value of A. Twenty-seven. Four. Uh, sorry, what? You can take up to twenty. Uh, up to twenty. Okay. So if I take C equals twenty, for example, then what am I? Should be 10. A plus B should be 10. So, for example, I will get A as 1 and C, B is 9, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. But you see, the trouble with this is it's already there because this case, which was 1, I only care about what the three numbers are, right? I don't care which is A, which is B, which is C. So, 1, 9, and 20, that is my subset. And we have already gotten that subset here. I think up, up to 4. Up to four, up to C equals four. Uh, why? Okay, so the first thing is, uh, so you notice in the earlier case, we, we made a, a certain assumption. We said, let's call A as the smaller of the two numbers, right? So that's something we should, we should ideally do. So what we are trying to do here seems like, let's call C as the smallest of the numbers. Okay, so I'm now looking at C is the smallest and then uh, and then I'm looking at A and B. So is the way I've drawn the table at least, it's like uh, I fix C, let me say C is the smallest of the three and then among A and B, I'm calling A as the smallest number. Right? So I'm going to make this assumption. C is uh, less than A is less than B. Okay, or if you wish, you can just say C less than B less than A. If it's, uh, Anyway, it doesn't matter. So let's let's call uh, assume that T is A B C. That C is the smallest of the three numbers. A is the middle, and B is the largest. <coughs> okay. So under this assumption, we need to sort of figure out what the uh, you know what the possibilities are. So what's what's the maximum C can be? Remember, the total sum is thirty, right? So maximum, so 10 is actually a good choice. If C is 10, for instance, then A has to be at least 11, B has to be at least 12, right? And the sum of those three is already more than 30. Okay, so let's look at one just slightly smaller than that. Suppose C, I take C equals uh, eight, would that be all right? So C is eight, then um, would I have gotten all the possibilities? No, I mean, I forgot nine, sorry. Suppose I take C equals nine, then what are the possibilities for A and B? A would have to be at least 10, B would have to be at least 11, right? So nine plus 10 plus 11 is exactly 30. The maximum till 11. So take C uh, is enough to consider the numbers from one to nine. Those are the only possibilities I need to consider. Okay. And for each choice of C, I need to, to look at the possibilities of A and B. So let's do that. So if I take, uh, for example, C equals nine. So we, we did the first few, we did one, two, and so on. So I shouldn't do 20 here. So uh, I, I hope whatever I'm saying so far is clear. If you have uh, if something's confusing, please feel free to unmute and ask. So what I've said so far is we just need to keep going like this, the same tables we have to draw until C equals nine. Okay, now at C equals nine, let's see what would I do? I would have A and B similarly. So their sum has to now be um, 21, right? Since the total sum is 30. So A and B have to be two numbers whose sum is 21. So what are the possibilities for A and B? One and 20. 1 and 20, 2 and 19, and so on, right? So these are the possibilities for A and B. Should I consider all these possibilities? 
No sir. Why not? So how far would I have? Would I have twenty one? So ten and eleven, right? This is what I would have actually written. A should be less than B. Okay. So notice, I shouldn't do this because the this first possibility, which is one and twenty, there A is you know A is smaller than C. So I have assumed that I am listing my elements in this order. That C is less than A is less than B. So what's the problem? What would happen if I took this possibility? Why shouldn't I do this? It's already exist when C. Correct. Correct, because it's already covered. The reason why we are making this assumption is in order to prevent double counting. So we are we we say beforehand that we are only going to take assume that C is smallest, A is next, B is next, so that when we list the possibilities, we will avoid the double counting possibilities. Okay. So this so I mean all these counting problems. um you know double counting i mean either avoiding double counting or if you double count figuring out exactly how, by how much you have double counted and then removing it that's like inclusion exclusion and so on these are all the the general sorts of principles that uh, apply to almost every every counting problem so let's see let's try and complete this uh, this calculation so the point is each table we draw we should also be careful to ensure that a is the the middle guy uh, and b is the largest guy. okay in other words we should ensure that this value of a is always bigger than this this value of c so i should delete all these guys 3 and so on and only take well which one can i take there's only one possibility i can take in this table which is 10 11 okay all the other ones are they don't satisfy the the property so i should erase all the rest so c equals 9 then only 10 11 is a possibility Okay, and so on. So for each possibility, for each choice of C, the choices of A I should take should only start from C plus one onwards. Okay, so this is um, you know this this is broadly how you solve this particular problem. But more generally, so how would we how would we do this in, in generality? So uh, so let's you know it's it's useful to. Sort of pose this problem in uh, in very general terms. That is, uh, instead of saying cardinality of t is two and sum is thirty, uh, so let me give these uh, sum and this this number and name. Okay, so let me let me say what I mean by that. Okay, so uh, let me uh, let me say that, like we did in the previous problem where we you know gave that a name. Uh, so let let's consider the set. So sorry, let a of n comma k denote what is this going to denote? The number of subsets, two element subsets. So the number of two element subsets T of the numbers from one to n. Okay, so this n is going to tell me um, what the uh, what the subset is. A number of two element subsets T of one to n with some equals k. Is my definition clear? I'm going to take uh, two parameters n and k, two natural numbers, and I'm going to say a and k will denote. The number of subsets, two element subsets, the number of ways of picking two numbers from one to n, such that the sum of those two numbers is k. Okay, and we we sort of we know what the these numbers are. Uh, so what are these numbers? For example, uh, so what's the smallest uh, possible choice of k here? So uh, n, I mean, I have to pick two elements from one and n. So What's the smallest possible sum I can get when I pick two elements from one to n? Three. Sorry, what? Three. Three, because I can pick one and two. Those are the two smallest possibilities. What's the largest sum I can get? Thirty-nine. Ah, uh, which is two n minus one. Oh, sorry. Ah, ah, two n minus. So I have taken n and n minus one. 
the two largest possibilities so observe that uh, these are the only possible values of k for which a and k is zero so uh, non zero sorry so let me phrase it like this a and k will be zero unless k is in this range okay, otherwise always a and k is zero and if k is in this range one can figure out what a and k is what's the value of a and k um, okay. so if unless this is true so that's the first observation second observation if k is in this correct range then what's the value of a and k require some thought so let's do the same thing right t is the subset a b a is less than b let's say so how will we draw the table we'll say a b a is 1 b is k minus 1 now because k is the sum 2 k minus 2 and so on right and but i have to assume that a is smaller than b so what's the largest possible choice of a that i can take here k minus 1 by 2 okay it depends on whether k is odd or k is odd even exactly huh? yes so if if k is odd i will have one one possibility and even i will have one possibility so what is the possibility for if k uh, is even k by 2 if k is even k, k by 2 but then what's the choice for b but here here we take k by 2 but it is not possible correct so if k i can't choose k by 2 that right so there are two possibilities so if k is even uh, k minus 2 k by 2 on both sides so this is k by 2 minus 1 and there it is k by 2 plus 1 that's the largest choice possible right so what is this how many what is the total number it's 1 till k by 2 minus 1 right so a and k is k by 2 minus 1 if k is even and in this range okay and between 3 and 2 and minus 1 so it's it's a easy to compute function so we know it's this and if k is odd k minus 1 by 2 Okay, so then it goes till k minus one by two and k plus one by two. So there it is, k minus one by two. Okay, by by similar similar results. Okay, good. So what we know is that this is a a, a nice computable function a of n comma k. It is zero whenever k is outside this finite range. And in this finite range, it is either k by two minus one or k minus one by two, depending on Whether k is even or k is odd. Okay, so this again k is in this range. Okay, okay. So what is um, uh, what's what is the reason for wanting to define this this subset A and K? Observe that the subsequent problem, the three element problem that we are trying to solve here, is something which you can reduce to a two element problem, which is what we were trying to do, and we were trying to write down these tables and so on. Okay, so let's let's do this reduction step. Okay, so now with this with uh, with the use of this function a and k, we will now solve the three element problem that we needed. Okay, so let me go back to my original three element problem. What was my question? I wanted number of okay number of subsets t. So okay, forget the number right now. What I am looking for is three element subsets t of uh, Uh, okay, so now let me call it. Um, so what? What do we need? C less than A less than B. Is it? That was our choice. So all uh, three element subsets such that of. Uh, so this is a subset of one through twenty. Such that A plus B plus C equals that. Correct. So now let's let's solve this problem. Uh, I I will do it slightly differently from the way we did it earlier. Let's fix B as our choice, and then we will change C and A. Okay. So let's let's fix B here. So let's fix all the possibilities for B. Okay, what are the possibilities for B? B can be one, two, three, etc. B can be any number until twenty. Let's say. Okay. Now. For each possible choice of b, so I first fix a b from one to twenty. Having fixed a b, how many choices are there? Let's write that out. Having fixed b, how 
how many choices are there for a and c for this pair c and a c comma a let's say what is the answer so just a second let me just change this notation a unfortunately it comes up again in our notation so let me call this capital a instead of small a so just avoid any confusion so this function is called capital a of n comma k so now i'm asking so, suppose i fix a number b how many possibilities for c and a such that all the conditions are satisfied so capital a of 20 comma okay 30 minus b okay wonderful so the answer being proposed is the following it can be written in terms of this capital a function okay because remember the capital a function tells you how to solve the two element subset problem it is it counts a number of solutions to the two element subset problem so it is capital a of sorry what was the proposal 20, 20 comma 30 minus b 20 comma 30 minus b Okay, what does this mean? It is the number of ways of choosing two numbers from one to twenty, whose sum is thirty minus b. Correct? Almost right, but not quite. B comma thirty minus b. Wonderful. So observe, there is this is the little point that I was trying to make about that table, right? When I choose C, A, and B, remember I always have this further. condition that c a and b i mean c and a both have to be at most b right so again this is almost right it's even even closer to being right but still there is a slight problem grama this is a less than symbol right it's not a less than or equal to it's, a, it's a just a less than symbol so which means i can't allow b itself here so b, b minus 1 b minus 1 yeah that's about it. okay is this fine so the number of having fixed a b the number of choices for a and c can be expressed in terms of this function capital a it turns out to be capital a of b minus 1 comma 30 minus b okay now having done this what's the solution to the original problem so how many uh, how many Three element subsets can be found. How many T subset of one to twenty such that it has three elements and the sum of the three elements is thirty. So that was our original problem. Now we know how to solve it. What's the answer? So these are all subsets of the form C A B. We first fix B. and for that b we know the answer now how do you put it back together twenty in a of b minus one comma thirty minus b why twenty in two so remember this this function depends on b if b is twenty it is a of nineteen comma ten if b is nineteen it is a of eighteen comma whatever and so on right? this will change every time i change b Summation over b. Absolutely, just summation over b. So I allow b to be all the different. So these are all disjoint possibilities, and for each choice of b, I need to sum up the corresponding function value, which is a of b minus one comma thirty minus. Okay, is this clear? So what we are doing here is is uh, sort of. I mean, many of the principles we we looked at are all at work. So one is the sum principle. Which is you you sort of split it into many disjoint cases and then you add up the final answer. And here we we are you know in today's examples we have seen a few where you know it's good to define a function here which counts certain things and that to slightly more generally than the original problem right we we introduce two parameters n and k in general to do it 
and this sort of general approach is 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 often uh, very powerful now we use that function the sum of those function values appropriate function values is exactly the coefficient you want so observe also that you know this function could possibly be zero for many choices of b okay so that's all right I and mean, that's not a problem if b is 18 for example right then i cannot find two more elements c and a because uh, oh sorry sir the total sum is 30 right uh, i guess i'm all right yeah b can be any one in this case all the all the possibilities are not yeah okay so that's the that's the way it is no no b can't be too small b can't be Ah, b can't be too small. That's right. That's right. Sorry, and it's not too large. That's a problem. Absolutely. So, what's the smallest possible value of b for which we'll get a non-zero answer? Uh, I guess b has to be c and a are smaller than b, right? So, nine, ten, eleven. B is at least eleven. If b is smaller than eleven, you are not going to be able to find an answer. Okay. So, this this contribution will actually be zero if b is ten uh, or smaller. So actually, I could change the summation and write b equals 11 to 20 if I wanted. That will be the same answer. Okay, but in some sense, we don't care. It's it's better to just have a more general sort of expression. B can be anything from 1 to 20. If you say that first 10 terms are zero. Okay, and observe that zero thing we have already looked at. This was our see unless uh, uh, you know this this k is between 3 and 2 and minus 1. Um, You are going to get get zero always. So if in this case your uh, uh, you know those two numbers, whatever it was, b and 30 minus b, have to satisfy this this inequality. Only then you will get a non-zero answer. So in this case, if b equals 11 and higher, are the only ones for which you get a non-zero answer. Okay. So yes, that's time. Should we uh, stop? Or are there any other questions? Or... Okay, if there are no other questions, maybe we can stop. Uh, I will before next uh, to so, but in this formula, of, uh, yeah, yeah. So in the Go formula, ahead. capital Y and of K is does not depends on Y. It's independent of uh, Y, right? In the formula. Capital Y of n comma k. Uh, If we take uh, in the previous problem, we take oh, k equal to thirty. Oh, you are right. You are right. You are right. I, I, I guess I'm missing. You are right. Yes. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, it, so if we take n equal to twenty, k equal to thirty in the previous case, uh, we get only six. Uh, no, no. It depends on n in this sense. No, no. See, it depends on n because it is only non-zero for k between. Three uh, and twelve minus one. For in this range, it doesn't depend on n. As long as you are in that range, you are okay. It only depends on the total sum. But in the but previous problem, as soon as you out of that range, it is zero. So it, see, if you change n, that range will change, right? Okay, sir. So, but if you take the previous problem, uh, take two elements subset of one to twenty, sum is thirty. Yeah. We get answer is uh, six, I think. If you take uh, k equal to thirty. The sum is thirty. Ah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. K has to be. I guess there is a mistake already. Yes, absolutely. Because K minus one can't be too big, right? Uh, I also want. Yes, you are right. You are right. Absolutely, there is a truncation in the other direction also. I can't allow k minus one to be bigger than n. So I can only take. Okay, what does this ensure? This is only ensuring a is less than b. So I also need the following things. I also need that. So okay, there are further inequalities. You are right. So in fact, further. We should also have ensured that k minus one is at most yeah, n, n minus one. At most n, right? 
the n is also okay no k minus 1 can be at most n uh, k minus 1 is at most n that's right i also need i also is that all i need i also need uh, k by 2 minus yeah okay sorry so this this computation of this formula for n k is not correct uh, we need to figure out also that it should live within the allowed range right so let's just see so for 1 to 20 i need a total sum to be 30 so 30 T divided to so this is the smallest possible sum and the largest possible sum I can get outside that range it is zero. Um, okay, how should we do this? I think this formula only true for k less than or equal to. Yeah. This is only true if k yeah only if k minus one is less than or equal to n that is our assumption right uh, only then all the all the things I wrote in the table will come otherwise they will not so if however if k minus one is bigger than n then what will happen is that there will be a further this table get cut off at some point I mean these values will also not be possible. right you should only take so okay good so maybe we should write many more cases is that uh, what you suggest um so if so so maybe we should say and if k minus 1 is at most n then this formula holds if on the other hand uh, k minus 1 is bigger than n then So then we have to modify it in some way. Okay, if k minus one is bigger than n, then there will be at some point. So in this table, somewhere this n will appear, right? So the some possibilities will get thrown out, and you can only take the possibilities until uh, n. So only these numbers between k by two plus one and n, only those possibilities will will come into play. So that will be you know k by two plus one minus uh, minus n plus one. Okay, so the formula will have to be modified. Uh, maybe okay. So let me just uh, at this point let's say leave this as an exercise, and maybe we will next uh, next tutorial. Maybe this is a good exercise for next tutorial. So let's. Uh, so the goal is to fix this formula. What is the correct formula for a and k? Because there are lots of cases involved, and also if one can somehow uh, give a sort of a nice compact description of this, you know, in terms of integer part function and so on, without involving these cases, that will also be nice. Okay. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, one needs to. So one yeah, needs to be careful uh, about all the bounds. Yeah, that was real. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. Good to see. Yeah. yeah. So okay, uh, we meet again at five o'clock, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. I will okay. try to I'll try to send out a tutorial sheet on WhatsApp group and uh, email before that. But uh, let's see. If not, we'll just. Uh, uh, so here are some. Uh, you know, you could work out. Last time we did this necklace problem, so we can continue to do counts on necklaces to begin with. in the tutorial okay yes, sir. okay okay, sir. okay. Yeah. yeah okay thank you sir yeah so we meet at 5 guru sami ha ah, yes sir 5 yes, okay 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 sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir yeah